Yeah. Uh, we're going to talk about American Romanticism, and then we're going to get into our discussion on the devil and Tom Walker. Um, I imagine this uh, conversation will last uh, up until uh, Tuesday as well. I have a lot I like to talk about. Uh, let's make sure that we um, are very aware. Everything that I'm about to give you, all these notes, all this information, I'm just going to lecture straight from here because there's a lot, so you just need to listen and write. Um, these details will be asked about on your next exam. These details will be asked about on your next exam, so make sure that you are paying attention. So we are moving into a section on American Romanticism and Gothic literature. You'll notice that this is a, a distinct shift from all the literature that we've read up until um, this point, because all the literature we've read up until this point has been nonfiction, political writing, sermons, journal entries, poetry that are based in reality, things of that nature. The reason for this is because for a long time, um, from the Puritan era up through the Enlightenment era, um, the idea of fiction, writing fiction for um, entertainment, was not something that people um, thought was a worthwhile endeavor. Um, it was seen as pointless or childish, or in some cases, probably with the Puritans, even against God. Um, and with the Enlightenment, you have to understand that the Enlightenment mindset that led to the American Revolution was very, very uh, based in fact, and in reason, and in, um, oh, what's that word I'm looking for? Um, well, reality, fact, reason, reality, um, uh, pragmatism. So this was the kind of thinking that dominated uh, our, uh, our country at that time. So after the Revolutionary War and after America had sort of gotten its footing as a country, around about 1820 or so, um, a, our first literary movement emerged. So America's very first literary movement was the Romantic Movement. Um, as I've said before, literary movements are just uh, eras or periods where Certain types and genres, forms and styles of literature are dominant, usually backed up with some sort of underlying philosophical idea. And so the Romantic movement was the first true American literary movement to emerge. Like I said, it emerged around 1820 or so, um, during a time of great social change in the country. The economy was growing, industrialization was booming, and the country was quickly and vastly expanding. We had made the Louisiana Purchase. The country had suddenly become a lot larger than its initial 13 colonies. Metropolitan cities were popping up. Agriculture and industrialization were significantly booming. Um, so on one hand, um, the Romantic Movement was sort of a reaction to that this um, sort of pushback against the big city life, against the industrial life. Um, it was also a bit of a pushback against the Puritan influence that had dominated America for so long, and it was a pushback against the age of reason and age of enlightenment that uh, shaped the initial founding of the country. The authors of the Romantic movement tended to reject the sort of ordered rationality of the Puritans and the revolutionary writings. So you'll notice that everything we've read up until this point has been very ordered, very, um, uh, very logical, very reasonable. The Romantics kind of push back against that. So what makes up Romanticism? Well, much like the movement in Europe, it was strongly focused on nature, emotion, Optimism, imagination, superstition, mythology, freedom and individualism, human goodness, humanism, 
humanism, uh, the supernatural, and other things of that notion. So you'll see that this is a bit of a departure from, like I said, that age of reason. It's focused a lot more on like these natural elements. Oh, and also nostalgia, nostalgia for a time before industrialization and things of that nature. Romanticism not only reflected the bright side of human emotion and nature, but also the dark side of human emotion and nature. That's why the Gothic movement is a basically what we would call a subgenre of romanticism. It's a subgenre of romanticism. So romanticism and dark romanticism or gothic, however you want. Some people use those terms interchangeably, dark romanticism and gothic. I think that's probably okay. They're very similar with one another. But that's what they did. They emphasized both the bright and light and optimistic aspects of life, but also the dark. And the focus on nature cannot be understated. As you will notice, a lot of what we read in the Romantic movement um, focuses heavily on nature. I said that Romantic writers idealized and romanticized the past. So in this age of a dark and grimy and industrialized world, um, they saw the time before that when life was more rural and agricultural. People spent more time in nature. They saw nature as an escape from this, you know, steamy, grimy, oily, industrialized world. The machinery of the industrialization, the packed, crowded uh, apartments, all that stuff. They idealized the past. And a lot of the American writers had actually grown up at the edge of continental wilderness. They had grown up during a time when people spent more time out in the woods, or before a lot of these towns and big cities had really started to spring up everywhere. Of course, places like New York and Philadelphia and Boston had always existed. But especially prior to the Revolution, the idea of the natural setting was still very um, accessible to them. And so the, a lot of the stories, you'll notice, like I said, are set in nature, set on a frontier where they felt all this great nostalgia. Another thing that the Romantic movement focused on regarding nature is this desire to um, preserve this pristine and beautiful natural world. They saw North American continent as wondrous and beautiful. And they wanted to preserve that notion of it and protect it against things like exploitation and destruction. At the same time, people also found a way to repurpose American romanticism um, through the lens of like American pride and exceptionalism. Because as I said, there is that huge focus on individualism and freedom which is, as we know, is very, very important to the American identity as a whole. And so one of the things we kind of notice with the Romanticism is even though it tends to be a pushback on a lot of the social upheaval and changes of the time, it also idealizes or gives us this picture of the ideal American, this purely free, courageous individual. We're going to talk about how the Romantic hero is a, a caricature of the ideal American here in just a little bit. And like, as I said, um, the, uh, you know, for a long time, fictional stories were discouraged, discouraged in the Puritan movement and discouraged in the um, Enlightenment movement, because these are silly things that no one needs to mess with. These are not rational. These are not reasonable things. Fictional writing for entertainment is ridiculous. Well, the Romantic movement changed that. And they certainly did not shy away from religious criticism and skepticism. This is a time when, of course, people are still very religious. But there was a lot of criticism and skepticism interwoven into the stories that we're going to read, especially about the Puritan uh, beliefs specifically. You're going to notice, especially with Nathaniel Hawthorne, which we're going to read some of him, and even with Washington Irving, as we're going to talk about today, 
there, is, there are subtle critiques and criticisms of the Puritans and the dominant religious mode of that time. Gothic literature especially focused heavily on the darker side of faith and what being a zealot or a fundamentalist can do to the human person. Now, as I said, we have Romanticism, which is has focuses on all those things I talked about, nature, optimism, human goodness, human nature, all that kind of stuff. It also did focus on the goodness of nature. I haven't said that specifically, but that is, if you haven't derived that yet from what we said, it focused on the goodness and the purity of nature. But the darker side of Romanticism, the Gothic movement, dark Romanticism, it, it, it expressed the same things, but in an opposite manner. The darker side of Romanticism, the Gothic aspect of Romanticism, focused more on the macabre, death, insanity, ghosts, ghouls, and spirits. It emphasized the supernatural, the haunted, and the destructive aspects of nature. And as we know, nature is a wild beast. It can be as beautiful, like if you look out the window right now, what we have in front of us is a gorgeous and beautiful day. The weather is chilly, the sky is perfectly blue and sunny. It would be a great day to go on a hike. And it would be a great day to go out there and enjoy nature. But we also know that nature can be just as destructive and dangerous as it can be beautiful and pristine. You think about weather, like tornadoes and hurricanes. You think about the animals that exist out in nature that could cause you harm. You think about the poisonous berries and plants, things like that, or the types of things that we see in exotic movies like quicksand. So nature has its destructive aspects, and sometimes um, Gothic literature like to emphasize the darker side of nature, as we are going to see in The Devil and Tom Walker. There's also this sort of this belief in both the darker and the lighter side that nature is ultimately... Ultimately, the, um, the, the authority, the untamable authority in the world. We see this in, so we, I don't know, I think we're going to read The Fall of the House of Usher. We'll see it in something like The Fall of the House of Usher. <clears throat> so yes, so they focused on nature, but to the Romantics specifically, like I said a minute ago, they believed that nature equals innocence and goodness, and that urban life and civilization can hinder the goodness of humans. They believe that the urban life and the city life can hinder the goodness of humans. Another thing the Romantics were focused on, which was a significant departure from the, um, the Puritans and the Founding Fathers and the Revolutionaries, was that they weren't very concerned with social or political form or reform. That wasn't their major concern. They didn't care as much about social or political reform. They cared more about the expression of their own experience. They cared about their intuition. The romantics were very, it's not fair to say selfish, but they were more focused on the human person, the human experience, the human intuition, your gut feelings. Let's not worry so much about all this science and structure and philosophy. Let's instead focus on our emotions. Let's focus on our lived experiences. Let's focus on life as we know it, love and hatred, anger and happiness, all those things that we feel as human beings. Let's focus on the humanness of being alive and the and individual freedom. Let's focus on that so much instead of reform, which would make a little bit of sense because at this time, at this time in, in America, even though uh, things, you know, things are never perfect, but America had gotten its foothold in the world. It was growing. It was expanding. Uh, the war was over. We got through the Revolutionary War and founded a country. We fought off the British again in the War of 1812. Things were going pretty good for us. There wasn't a whole lot of need for political and social reform anymore like there had been 50, 60, 70 years prior. Instead, we were in a different time. And when you have a different time like that, things like this, these kinds of ideas have, uh, pop up. So in that, Romanticism is often, if you wanted to bring this all under one big roof, and this is important, make sure you write this down. 
Romanticism is characterized by something called the five I's, like the letter I. And those are imagination, intuition, idealism, inspiration, and individuality. So again, romanticism is often um, characterized, you can broadly characterize romanticism under one of those five categories, imagination, intuition, idealism, inspiration, and individuality. The romantic hero, like I said earlier, the romantic hero is someone who appears in a lot of romantic stories. They're usually the hero of the story. He tends to have very significant qualities with our what we might consider to be that ideal American hero. Innocent and pure of purpose. A sense of honor, not based on rules, but a higher principle. A knowledge of people and life based on a deep intu intuitive understanding, not on a formal learning. So again, the first three elements of the romantic hero. Often youthful qualities, innocent and pure of purpose. When we say innocent, we don't necessarily mean not someone who is, you know, we're not talking about someone who's necessarily afraid to get their hands dirty at times, but someone who is not driven by evil desires or evil intentions. The romantic hero, again, has a sense of honor that's not based on any of society's rules, but some higher principle. You'll notice it kind of sounds like I'm starting to describe a lot of the heroes in Disney movies. It's because the, Dis the hero in most Disney movies is usually a good example of a romantic hero. Again, a knowledge of people in life based on, based on deep intuitive, intuitive understanding. Someone who has based their understanding of life and the human race on their lived experiences, not from their formal education. A person who loves nature and avoids town life. Their quests are often for some higher truth. We can start to see a little connection to this in John Smith. We can see some threads about this in John Smith. So the last few things here, three of the biggest literary giants to come out of the Romantic movement who are three, are three of the most important writers in American history, at least in the uh, 19th century, are Washington Irving, who we're going to read about today, Edgar Allan Poe, and Nathaniel Hawthorne. These three men were incredibly important literary giants. And they rose out of this movement. They shaped it, especially Washington Irving. Washington Irving, as a matter of fact, was one of the first writers, if not the first writer in America, to uh, pioneer the idea of writing fiction as a career. He pioneered the idea of writing fiction as a career. And so what we're going to see is, in a way, uh, American Romanticism reflected the core values of American idealism. And lastly, one of the things about American Romanticism that it did is it gave way to the short story. There were stories and sketches written before this time, yes. But thanks to American Romanticism, we have, the American Romantics are the ones who basically pioneered the short story. And by that we mean like that one piece of fiction that you can read in isolation by itself in one sitting. So those are the things that about Romanticism that we will want to be on the lookout for as we go through our reading, both the light and the dark aspects. I will ask you questions on the exam about that, especially the elements of Romantic fiction. What kind of uh, philosophies did the romantic fiction bring with it? What kind of beliefs did it bring with it?
I'm going to ask you about those five eyes that we talked about, the romantic hero. These are all things that we'll be asked about that you'll be expected to be able to describe and explain on the test. If you need to, you can always go back and watch the first part of this story or, or this lecture for more information. Okay? Let's, um, do you guys want to take a quick break? Shake the dust off a little bit. Some of y'all look a little sleepy eyed. I have my thesis. Okay, yes. Oh, I do need to take up your thesis if you have that. Please go ahead and get that out for me. I'll be giving you feedback probably either in person by Monday or by email over the weekend. It's like a short break. We'll come back in and we'll talk.